Hi everyone, this is Nathan with the ebookreader.com. For this video, I'm going to show you guys how the Onyx Books M96 handles uh, various different kinds of PDF files. So, uh, first I'll show you the hardware a little bit, but I'll cover this more detail in the main review. Uh, first I'll just show you, we got menu button, back button, and page buttons right here, and there's a little navigation wheel right here. You can see it moves the cursor on the screen, and you can make selections with that. Um, and this device that has a um, electromagnetic touchscreen, it comes with a stylus, so you can't use your fingers to use it on the touchscreen. You can use, uh, you use the stylus or you can use the navigation wheel to move around. Uh, so uh, as far as the hardware goes, it also has a micro SD card slot on the bottom. I don't know if we'll show up here. Uh, volume buttons. Got a USB port. Those power buttons down there as well. And there's a headphone jack. Uh, there's a little bit of a little uh, speaker on the back. So Okay, so the M96 is essentially an updated version of the Onyx M92. Uh, it's got improved hardware. It's a lot of the build quality is a lot better now. And we've got the uh, added Android operating system here, so it's like a completely different device basically just because of the operating system. If you guys saw my er earlier review of the Onyx T68, this uh, software is going to look very familiar to, familiar to you because it is basically the same software. We've got a couple of different apps on this device, like the Neo PDF app, uh, specializes for PDF reading. So uh, with the open operating system, it comes with Google Play, you can install a bunch of apps, you can install some other PDF apps like I... I installed Adobe up there, but uh, in Manitou, because some people were telling me that works, or Mantano, uh, some people were telling me that that works well for PDFs, and it actually does. You can turn off the animations. Um, it doesn't seem to have text reflow, but I mean, really, you don't really need any of these other apps for the um, PDFs because the uh, built in application works really well. So I'm going to show you how the built in reader handles PDF files. Like I said, you can use any other reader to open this, but the Onyx Neo Reader is definitely the best as far as. Uh, I've seen for e-ink, e-readers, and PDF handling. It's got a lot of good features here. So let's just load up this basic PDF first. Uh, like I said, it doesn't have the touch screen you can touch with your hand, so you use the stylus to turn pages, or of course you can use these buttons right here. You can also use this right here, this little navigation wheel. So there's some shortcuts uh, with the navigation wheel. You can just go up or down and it will reflow the text. It will increase the text size. And if you keep going back down, it will reset it back to change zoom page now. So. Uh, and if you open up the me settings menu here, you can open the settings by hitting the menu button. You can hit this button. So this is kind of misleading because it shows a home screen right there, a little home icon. Uh, but actually, it's the menu button. So you use that to pop this up or you can just tap in the screen. So uh, we got a lot of options down here. Let's start, uh, start walking through some of these. The first thing that you pretty much want to do with any PDF when you first open it is bold the uh, text. It makes it look a lot better. As you can see, that considerably increased the darkness of the text just by doing that. Uh, so that looks really good on the 9.7 inch ink screen here. So this is a 9.7 inch pearl screen. Let me show you it compared to the Kindle just really quickly just to get an idea of how much of a difference there is size wise with the 9.7 inch screen. Uh, I haven't reviewed one of these since the Onyx M92 and I forgot how cool these 9.7 inch e-readers are. So this is a really cool device. I've been super impressed with it. Uh, these PDF features work really well and all the uh, uh, Android apps I've installed have worked really well. For some reason I've had a lot more stability uh, with this device than I did with the T68. It had a lot more apps were crashing and some various issues. I have not experienced one single crash on this device yet. It's running very smoothly. So like I was saying with these other settings in here at the text, you got the uh, reflow. So we already talked about the reflow. Let's go ahead and reflow that back down to the regular view and I'll show you the other zoom options. If we go in here to zoom, you got the regular zoom in, zoom out, you know, the usual fit the width and fit the page. Uh, the selection works really well. I'll show you that with a different PDF, how it works really well, but with this one, it works too. I mean, it's just, you get that little selector right there and you can highlight exactly where you want um, the screen to show. So that does work well. And then we can go ahead and set some different modes. Let's go ahead and back out of this PDF and I'll get this tool, dual column PDF loaded here and show you what I mean about the different mo modes here. So if we come in here, Go to navigation, for instance. Well, let's go ahead and zoom it in first because this is all zoomed out. So if we zoom in a couple of notches here for this dual column PDF, and then we can go ahead and set it up so that you can scroll from there to down to, to top left to that wise. You just go in here into the menu and then you hit the navigation. So we've got different options here. So this will automatically crop it, these two right here. <clears throat> This actually does a good job of the cropping. You don't even need to go into the auto crop feature because that gets rid of the margins really well, as you can see. Uh, but with this dual, col dual column PDF, you may actually want to go ahead and, well, we're going to need to go ahead and resume it again. But if we want to get a little bit bigger even so you can see each column a little bit better here, we can go ahead and set it up like I was saying earlier to scroll set up so that it works with the um, 
column view. So you go to navigation right here, you see we got these little indicators where it's going to scroll from. Um, you've got this, this is the one we want right here, so it goes from top to down. So then once we use this little icon, this little wheel over here, it goes, as you can see, from each side to the columns. One thing I noticed though is when you use the page buttons, it actually goes the full page forward. So you need to actually use this button to go about the layout. So as you can see, I already got the text bold on this particular PDF. It really does make a big difference just having that bold setting right there. So that's regular. We go one and then it's considerably darker. It's a lot easier to read. Um, and then you can considerably make it even more bold with these settings. This tends to get a little like weird looking if you keep going up here though. Like the font gets all fat and it's not as rough as it was. Uh, I've been using the one setting a lot. I mean that just using the one alone makes it a lot darker. That's really nice looking text right there. Really clear on the screen. I really love this e-ink screen. So it doesn't have a front light like these smaller Kindles do. Like these 6 inch models. Apparently they haven't perfected front lights for 9.7 inch screens yet. But I don't know. It's something about having more screen area. It seems to reflect... Uh, more of the area here with the light color so it doesn't seem to be uh, as noticeable with not having a front light like it's not as much of an issue obviously you do need to have a lamp on um, a light more often than not though but here's with the light off and obviously it's still easily readable even with the uh, light off as you can see right here compared to the Kindle it's quite a bit different without having a front light but I really do like the screen it's super clear the color is super dark uh, it's really nice looking screen here. So let's go ahead and just walk through some of these other PDF features here. You can also, uh, like we were adjusting the bold right there, you can adjust the contrast as well. So you can sort of fine tune the text exactly how you uh, want it to look there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and back out of here and then show you how the um, the note settings work. So we've got these different options for notes. Um, I get confused sometimes. The, t the table of contents is in the notes, so sometimes I forget that. But you can just jump over there. It's in the note category. And it also lists everything else, as you can see right there, is a, as far as bookmarks and annotations. I don't think I have any in here yet. But uh, this uh, particular device offers some on-screen note options. So you can come in here and do the scribble. Uh, you can just add annotations with the keyboard as well. So if we come and do the scribble, obviously you can write right on the screen. And I'm surprised by how responsive it is. I mean, there's really not much of a delay. There's just a little bit of a delay. It's not hard to keep up with the icons on here at all. Um, it's very precise. It's one of the benefits of this type of touch screen right here. Obviously, you can do all kinds of stuff uh, with that. So we've got the different icons down here. Uh, I guess if you have like a black screen, um, like a black image or something, you can switch to white. Then this is the little eraser dealie. Um, we can go ahead and pan around the screen right here if you wanted to scroll over and do something else. Um, so that's how those on-screen scribbles work. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how the export feature works because when I click on it, it doesn't tell me what it does and it doesn't seemed I haven't been able to locate a file for where it is exporting to so uh, check out the written review with that I'll go ahead and I've uh, asked the folks about how that works there so I'll, I'll include that in the written review because I'm not exactly sure how the export feature works right now so uh, as far as the rotation works that's a good option to use too for certain kinds of PDFs uh, but I mean that the 9.7 inch screen you really don't need to uh, switch over to landscape mode very often just because everything displays pretty well just how it is with the um, portrait mode but then you can go ahead and use this here. All right, so I've loaded up another PDF here real quick. I just wanted to show how the margin crop feature works. So you can go ahead and use the auto crop, which actually works quite well most of the time. We can just set it like right there. You can fine tune it a little bit more. So that will get rid of your side margins pretty well right there. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you as well is if you hold down, you got the on-screen stuff as well. If you hold down on a word, you get the usual copy, highlight, annotations options, and of course you can uh, use the dictionary as well. This device that uses Quick Dick for the dictionary, you can uh, install a whole bunch of different options in here. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different um, ones you can download in here. Okay, a few other things you can do. Obviously, you can run searches. Uh, the Onyx Reader apps, they have the uh, option to set screen refresh, so uh, what it does, the full re refresh on the screen if you want it to... Uh, you know, flash or not. So one thing I also noticed about, like when you have it zoomed in like this, there isn't any way to like scroll on the screen unless you set it up to, you know, with those navigation options. So it's not going to like, when you page forward, like some devices, when you page forward, it'll show you the half, half, top half of the PDF and then it'll show you the bottom half of the PDF. Um, with this device, it doesn't seem to do that. So you need to actually scroll with the on-screen selector here. We're using the this you can actually turn that automation off too. I've noticed in the settings. So if you didn't want all that craziness going on, 
you can turn that animation off. So like I was saying, when you hit the page buttons, it actually turns the full page so it doesn't like scroll from top to bottom when you have it zoomed in to a higher level than it is right now. But sometimes you can use this thing to scroll around on the page depending on what setting you have on the navigation. So if we set it to, on the navigation for instance, if we just set it like, like this, I mean it would um, differ, it would scroll down and see how it scrolls down instead of going to the next page by hitting that button there. Alright, there's a few additional things and settings like you can have this bar down here. Let me go ahead and just show you the options really quick. You can have these options right here. Um, I disabled the reader status bar for instance. You can enable it if you want. Same with that system bar. A um, couple of screen settings in here. Like I said, you can turn off that animation and panning in zooming mode if you want. I've also got a few other settings in there and the scribble bar. Oh yeah, for the um, scribbles right there. Alright, so like I said, you can have that bar down here if you want and it shows you what part of the screen you're zoomed into and it gives you, you can have this on here if you want, if you can select to have the time on there and the battery percentage if you want, but that doesn't have to be on there. So like if you tap on here, it's a quick way to navigate. You can just jump the page. Alright, this is a PDF I like to show because it's like a 90 megabyte image based PDF. So I just like to load these ones up to see how well they load on e-readers because uh, this this particular PDF will bog down apps and devices a lot of times. But with this device, it seems to be working pretty well. I mean, as far as smooth, as smooth page turns goes, it doesn't keep bogging down like it uh, did with the uh, Luna HD that I was reviewing the other day. You can just keep hitting the page button and it will scroll forward. It's not real fast, it's definitely not as fast as those text-based PDFs, but um, I'm not having really any problems with it. So so here it is without that zoom, so that uh, animated pa page panning, so it just sort of clicks over to the next part instead of holding it and pushing it over. Alright, so this is how the home screen lays out on the device. You get your recently added section right here. You can scroll through these. And you've also got the now reading sections up here. You can actually change this from recently added to new now reading in the settings menu. So everything gets uh, loaded into this library here for the Onyx readers uh, built in apps here. So you got this layout right here. There's three different views. You got the cover view, the I kind of like this view the best because it gives you the most information. Alright guys, so I showed you most of the PDF features on this device. I just wanted to show you some different kinds of PDFs. This is a like a comic PDF. It displays really well on this ink screen here. I'll probably do a different uh, video for uh, P or, uh, comics and graphic novels specifically, but this is actually a PDF file. I just want to show you guys how it works on here. And it does uh, display well on this ink screen without even any adjustments. Alright, so I'm going to wrap up this video review right here. Check out the ebookreader.com for some additional details. And I'll be uploading some other videos. A uh, general review will cover a lot more details of this device in general. So if you wanted to know more info, check those out. Uh, thank you for watching and you have a good day.